Hey everybody, welcome back to Peace of Mind Kayak Fishing. Uh, as you can see by the date here, yes, I'm way behind, way behind on my videos. <laughs> and as you can probably hear here, I uh, lost my voice during the shooting of this video, way back in the beginning of May. But I'm coming to you from Cade Creek again, fishing with ultralights on, or using minnows out here today, with a combination of Stripers and largemouth for the target species. I was looking for crappy too, but they weren't doing much today. But if, if you're familiar with the area, this is the bridge that, that's currently under construction. It's probably getting close to completion now. <laughs> like I said, this is back in May. But this was a gorgeous morning here. Fantastic weather. Smooth water. Just a light breeze you can see moving water right now. But this is the first fish of the day here, and a nice way to start. Most of the schooly stripers that you'll find on this water are usually in the neighborhood of uh, about 12 to about 16 inches. This one here is pushing 18 to 20. So, nice size hybrid striper for this area. While we're watching the tail ending of this fight, it's also good, and I had one today, to have one of those medium action rods on with either a zoom super fluke or a topwater minnow type bait. But the super fluke is usually the best way to go, and that's for those point casts to rising fish that you see. But yeah, as that note says, as the video goes on, I'll get some shots of the shad that we're schooling in here thick. Because that's why these stripers are here. They're following the shad. And the shad love coming together around the structure created by these debris catchers at the construction site. You'll see them in a little bit. But yeah, this fish looks so beautiful in the morning sunlight. Oh, man. <laughs> Those thick, nice Clarks Hill hybrids. This one here is not quite as big. Another striper. Well, the striper are usually best early in the morning, but this one was a little bit smaller than the last. Yeah, she comes right here. She fights till the last, but this is a smaller one right here. But now as I'm, un as I'm unhooking this fish, keep an eye out. I'm going to turn my head to the right very quickly. And that's because there's going to be stripers blasting bait fish behind me. Should be coming up in about, oh, about eight seconds. There they go. <laughs> Those fish like to relate, I say those fish, those shad like to relate to the structure. It gives them cover, but the fish can also corral them in here. And here's a big bass. You can see a shadow coming just out front of my paddle. I'll pan back in a moment. Right? Well, that was a quick shot. <laughs> I'll get a better shot of him later. But just missed that fish right there, which makes not being able to cast to that particular largemouth even more of a shame. But you can see right here, that shadow moving right there, that's just the shad. They were in there thick moving around. And I'll get some great video of them later as well, both above water and underwater. You can see the bend in that ultralight. This was, this was a pretty decent fish right here.
Uh, it's a pretty lengthy fight here, but it is what it is when you're running a four-pound test. Nice largemouth, though. I'm not out, I'm not out here searching for largemouth, but they're fun to catch. I usually usually let those guys go, though. There you go. Another great fish for the early morning. I wish I could have gone diving here. That would have been fantastic. But this particular bridge gets a lot of boat traffic. Would not have been safe. And here's that big bass I told you was stalking me and the fish. I would have loved to go diving here, but no, nah, it was just, it would have been unsafe. Very unsafe. And here's another shot of those shad running up against the inside of this, uh, these dividers, these sediment and trash catchers as part of the construction site. I'm not in Georgia anymore, but if I were y'all, <laughs> I'd be sorry to see those go because they create great structure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a small largemouth this time, nothing too serious. <laughs> About knocking himself out there. And this one, you'll see me do a jawline check right here. I'm pretty sure this was actually a spotted, or at least a hybrid mix between a spotted bass and a largemouth, because the mouth was not as large. The jawline was not as long as you would have on a, a purebred, if you will, largemouth. And back in she goes. Now this one right here, ended up getting stuck underneath of these yellow buoy uh, barriers here. Because while they're at the top, they don't go all the way to the bottom, which is great for the fish. They get to go back and forth as they please, but you can get fish stuck under there. I have once or twice, but normally you're able to pull them out from under it because it's a soft rubber. But you'll see the note in a minute. Had this bass been healthy, she would have weighed at least three, four pounds based on the length. It's a long fish, but you'll see in a second, she needs some food, man. <laughs> this poor bass needs some food. Down on the Savannah River, you normally don't see that, but up here on Clarks Hill, every once in a while, you'll see one of these bass like this. But, uh, Normally when you catch a fish, it's going to spit out whatever you put in its mouth. But when I put this one back, you see me drop this minnow in here to help her out. When I put her back, I didn't see her spit it out. Hopefully she swallowed it, man, because God knows she needs the meal. But it was over a 20-inch bass, but you can see just not much weight to her. Not much at all. Poor girl. And here's the, the small fish of the day right here. I probably could have thrown this one back out for bait. <laughs> the little tiny bluegill. But got a pretty cool shot coming up. I think next I come up with some pretty good shots of the shad that were running along these yellow buoy barriers.
Actually, it's clear water today. Beautiful water. God, I wish I could have dove there. <laughs> that would have been fantastic. But the action was pretty solid and came from almost exclusively around this bridge here. Even without the buoys, this is one of the hottest spots to fish in Cade Creek, without a doubt. And most people blow right past it. The, the people that come in in bass boats don't spend too much time normally fishing around it. They go back in a few to the different coves back here in Cade Creek. But if you can find those schools of shad, man, yeah, you're going to have an exciting day. And if you're not familiar with it, the shad normally move back in these coves beginning at the beginning to mid part of March and last through about the end of May. Uh, after that, you're going to see stripers and bass going back deep. But up until then, when those shad are back here spawning, fishing's fantastic. Fantastic. Oh, as a side note, I'm using the, I want to say the Gamagatsu octopus hooks for here, right here. Uh, similar to a circle hook. Excellent for live bait fishing. Highly recommend them. It's usually an easy t hook takeout and holds the fish. Just absolutely holds them. Yeah, much more healthy fish than that long bass I just caught. These are my favorite shots right here, honestly. Catching the fish is great, but I love seeing them in the water. Here go the shot again. You, you can just see him. It's, <laughs> it's almost mesmerizing to me, man. Just watching them. It's, not, it's by no means on scale with the bait balls you find offshore but it's still pretty wild to see. Now, I had seen this bass. It, it, it was a big one. I don't know how big. You'll see why in a minute. <laughs> but she had blasted some bait fish up here on the side. I'm pretty sure it's that same bass that I saw on the water, both above the water and with the camera underwater. Somewhere in the neighborhood of three to four pounds, a nice fish. And as I am <laughs> often guilty of, I haven't been retying at this point after each fish that I caught. And so this, this big bass is pulling me back through riprap on some compromised line on an ultralight rig. So <laughs> you can probably guess how this one ends. And right here is a was a surprising catch, also the last fish of the day. <laughs> but yeah, I got that rod tip untangled just in time to hook that so I make this hook set. Yep. <laughs> Just a big old bluegill. There she is. Quick shot of her. But yeah, thanks for watching. Not too long of a video today. 
Uh, if you get a chance, hit Keg Creek in the spring, man. It's a great, great time out there, and I recommend minnows. You can go artificials, but minnows is the best way to go. Have a good one.